Our journey begins with us grabbing a bottle of Bath & Body Works' hand soap, which we were able to do from South Center Mall in Calgary. Their fall line was in full display, and it was so tough to pick out which one I wanted to do. It came down to the marshmallow pumpkin latte or the pumpkin pecan waffles. I wanted something pumpkin-y for the season. And after discussing with someone that works there, eventually I went with the marshmallow pumpkin latte since the pumpkin pecan waffles was more for kids and was a little too sweet for my tastes. And after grabbing some hand sanitizers, Kayla and I headed home. Bath & Body Works is known for their strong scents and whimsical seasonal products. In this video, I will go about trying to match the feel and lather of their gel hand soaps, so if you're interested in making your own gel hand soaps from home, then keep watching. This video is for you. Now, this won't be an exact dupe of their recipe, just my version of it, and I'll start by combining my surfactants. Bioturge AS40 is an awesome, negatively charged anionic surfactant that rinses off nicely and works great with hard water, which is important here in Calgary since our water is very hard. Up next, we have Cacomitopropylbetaine, which is a very gentle cleanser with some salt in it that helps to thicken some products when used in combination with other surfactants like Bioturge AS40. Cacomitopropylbetaine also produces great bubbles and helps with producing fluffy, stable lather. The next surfactant is one I'd never worked with before, but it was really interesting due to its different texture. This is BSB liquid surfactant, and it's a really thick, jelly-like consistency, almost like a thick slime. It's an anionic combo of a few different surfactants, but I like it here for its viscosity and mildness. Once all the surfactants are combined, I give it a nice gentle stir. You can see how the BSB liquid surfactant really globbed up here, and at this point, I was wondering if this would easily mix with my other ingredients, but I was going to find out soon enough. I set that aside and began combining my next set of ingredients. For my waters, I was going to use a combo of distilled water and aloe vera juice, but because I was actually out of distilled water, I decided instead to use rose floral water. This might have actually affected the color of my hand soap, which you'll see in a few minutes. But the rose water is an amazing ingredient used to soften skin. I love rose water for my face products and lotions, and it actually smells a little bit like roses. In a hand soap that rinses off though, it's kind of wasted, but it was all I had in a pinch, and it worked perfectly fine. Aloe vera juice has some salt in it, so in addition to being really soothing for your skin, it can actually also help thicken a product and add to a product's viscosity. Because liquid hand soap is primarily made of surfactants and water, it can be quite drying and harsh, so we need to add some skin moisturizing ingredients that will make our hands feel soft and conditioned after washing them. Here I'm using DL Panthenol to help with that. I added a few clumps at a time and then stirred it into my ingredients, making sure to break it up and fully incorporate it into the waters. I wanted my hand soap to have some color, so I used my water-soluble orange dye from Fizz Fairy. These dyes are very concentrated, so you want to go extremely light-handed when using. Like, just a few specks will be enough. I'm still working on figuring out just how much I need, since I tend to overcolor the product all the time. <laughs> you can use mica to color the hand soap, but without using a suspender like xanthan gum or polysorbate 80, the mica will eventually separate and settle to the bottom. Glycerin is an amazing humectant that draws moisture to skin and helps keep it there. Glycerin works wonderfully in water-based products, which is why I like using it in my lotions, liquid hand soaps, and creams. For more moisture, you can add oils, but you'll need a solubilizer like Polysorber 20 to help those oils incorporate with the water and to keep them from separating. 
A way around this is to add water-soluble proteins instead that moisturize skin like oils but work beautifully in water. One of my favorite hydrolyzed proteins is hydrolyzed oat protein. Propanediol 1,3 is another hydrating ingredient that's water-soluble and helps make skin feel so soft and moisturized. Like all of my products that contain water, I'm using a preservative to keep my hand soap shelf stable. Bacteria love water, so without preservative, my hand soap will start smelling funky after a week or so. I'm using Liquid Dermal Plus here as it's a great preservative to use for water-based products. To dupe Bath & Body Works' Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte Scent, I'm using a combo of three different fragrances from Fizzberry. The first one I'm going to use is White Caramel Cold Brew for the latte element of the scent. For the marshmallow note, I'm using Gooey Ghosts, which definitely has a sticky, sugary marshmallow vibe to it. And last but not least, for the pumpkin note, I'm using Pumpkin Donut Shop. This scent is mild on the pumpkin side, but it has the warmth and spice notes I'm picking up from Bath & Body Works' Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte smell. I know what you're thinking. How are the fragrance oils going to incorporate after all that talk about solubilizers? Well, surfactants actually are able to solubilize oils at a small percentage. The fragrance oils are only 1% of my recipe, and that's the perfect amount for my surfactants to keep the oil bound to the water in my hand soap. Now, getting the surfactants blended with the rest of my ingredients end up being a little more difficult than I thought. You can warm up the ingredients slightly to help with this, but if you don't want to heat up anything, you can carefully stir until everything is mixed in. It can be tempting to reach for the immersion blender here, but the less bubbles you kick into your hand soap, the better. Bubbles will increase the volume of the soap, making it tricky to pour into the bottles, and it will also create a cloudiness to the soap. A technique I used was to take a butter knife and a spatula and carefully lift and fold the surfactant into the rest of the ingredients. It worked over time and I was able to get everything mixed in, but I still ended up with some bubbles. So after some careful stirring, I still managed to cook up a lot of bubbles, which isn't ideal. So. Don't stir as vigorously as I did, but when I first brought my surfactants together with my liquid ingredients, I thought it'd be really tough to incorporate the two together, but after a while, they will start to melt together to form a nice thin gel that has, um, it's still kind of a watery consistency. So what we're gonna do next is thicken this with some Crothix, and hopefully we'll get that thicker gel-like consistency that we see in the Bath & Body Works hand soap. Crothix is an awesome thickener, but it's a little temperamental. Its ability to thicken a product can change depending on the fragrance oil or essential oil that you use. So while it might work to thicken one hand soap, it might not work for the other hand soap. It's also best to add it in small increments to see if you like the consistency before adding more. You don't want the hand soap too thick that it's not able to work through a pump. So this is what it looks like now that I've added Crothix and it is a really great consistency. This cloudiness and these bubbles will go away eventually. It's just that I've kind of agitated it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is just let it calm down a little bit so it's not so foamy. And I'll show you what it looks like the next day. But right now I am loving this consistency and the color is spot on. So let's get these bubbles down <laughs> a little bit and see what it looks like um, after a couple of hours. So right now it is still way too bubbly and it smells amazing. So here we are the next day and you can see that the bubbles have calmed down a lot and I always overdo it with the color. So it's a little darker than I would like it but the consistency is perfect. So now all that there is left to do is get this into a bottle and we are done and I'll show you how this 
how this performs. So to package this hand soap, I'm using a 250 milliliter PET plastic bottle with a pump. And these pumps come in a pretty long tube, so I had to trim it down to fit this um, length of bottle. But once you do, it fits perfectly. So to get my hand soap into here, I'm using a funnel to avoid any spillage. So let me get you a little bit further away so you can see what's happening. Because it's thick, we have to give it some time to get through that nozzle of the funnel. I think I might have overfilled it. Unfortunately, this happens. Oh goodness. Why do I always do this? And you also want to leave room for the pump as well. So I'm just pouring stuff out. So there's that. I still need to get some more of it out so that I can fit my pump. Let's get that out of there. <laughs> oh, this happens. Okay, that should be good. Okay, and there you go. There is my filled bottle of hand soap that I was hoping would be orange, but it is kind of reddish, a little darker than I was hoping. I never get this right. So if you're using water-soluble dyes, remember just the tiniest, tiniest bit is needed to color these guys. So now all that there is left to do is get my labels on here and show you what these look like, all labeled, and then show you a demo of how these hand soaps perform. So here is the demo of the hand soap. I'm gonna get my hand wet here and I'm going to pump a little bit of this hand soap onto my hand and you can see the consistency is that of a gel. I'll show you how it bubbles up. And it's a really gentle, lovely, bubbly lather and it is so nice and it smells. Oh my god, it smells so good. And because of that hydrolyzed oat protein, it's not going to feel as drying as other hand, liquid hand soaps feel. And ingredients like the panthenol really help to soften the skin, but I am in love with it and this consistency is perfect. So for my labels, I'm using online labels is 4 inch by 2 inch label, which is a little too long for my bottles but I'm just going to cut off that little bit off the bottom so that it can fit. And I tried my best to copy the general design of it. I'm just going to peel off the sticker. I'm going to stick it on my bottle like that. And this is how it looks. I don't have white ink, I can't print white font, but if this were in white, I think it would look pretty close. I got this graphic from Canva, and it was a Canva Pro image, so you'll need a Pro account to get it, but it's very similar cup and uh, marshmallows motif. And then in the back here, we have all of our ingredients. And so that's how it looks. So here is the Bath & Body Works Pumpkin Latte. And you can see when you pump it out, it's this really nice thick gel consistency. And our version should have a very similar consistency, which it does. Two are pretty identical. In terms of scent, this one is a little sweeter. There's a little bit of sugar in that. It's a little bit more marshmallowy, whereas mine is a little bit more on the coffee side of things. So I think I got pretty close though. It's the color, obviously, I went a little too heavy handed on the orange. It looks more red than orange. And if my label was white, you'd obviously be able to see it better. <laughs> so let me show you how it lathers compared to this guy. First up is Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte from Bath & Body Works. We're going to get my hand wet here. We're gonna pump. 
And one thing that they've made a change about for Bath & Body Works, they don't have dyes in their hand washes anymore. It's just a liquid, a clear liquid soap and the bottles are colored. So I put a little bit on my hand here. Just gonna demo to you guys how well it soaps and it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty creamy with small dense bubbles. It's pretty nice. So let me dry my hands and try with my hand soap. Because I don't have amber colored bottles, I dyed my hand soap this dark reddish color. It's supposed to be orange, but let me just get my hand wet again. Show you guys the consistency. And I'm going to show you the lather. And you can see that my lather is a little bit fluffier with bigger bubbles. I'll show you a side by side of the two different lathers so you can really see the difference. I think this fluffier lather is quite nice, feels really smooth and the bubbles are lovely. So that's it. If you liked how my hand soap turned out, give this video a like or leave a comment. It really helps the channel a lot. If you want this hand soap recipe, I have all the steps and ingredient amounts on my Patreon, which is linked below. And speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons, especially my Bubble BFFs. Listen right here. You guys are so generous and supportive. I couldn't do this without you. And thank you to Fizz Fairy for sending me their fragrances to try. I have everything in my description box, so go ahead and check them out. Don't forget to use my discount code for some money off. Thanks so much for watching till the end. Until the next one, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and keep making beautiful things like liquid hand soap. See you in the next one. Bye, guys.